Hi, I'm Catherine Cage. I'm a casting director in the Lower Mainland, and I'm working from home to show you what makes for a really strong self-tape. I think the most important thing for you to understand as an actor submitting a self-tape is that if I've requested an audition from you, it means I've already seen something in you that I like, and I want to see more. I want to know if we can work together. You'll still dance with me, right? Okay. Yeah, I'll bring it. I'm gonna have to sneak out though. Where are we gonna... Oh wait, my mom's coming. That's fantastic. I'll be right at your place later. I mean, I, I believe exactly what's happening. I believe everything that's happening that she's doing. I'm actually getting a little bit of goosebumps because I'm, I'm so impressed with how much stronger this scene was than the first one. This time I'd like to talk about genre. Let's get started. So this actor obviously has got a really nice comic timing. She's got a lot of um, quick changes, which is a comedic tool for, for a comic character. Uh, the things I'm not sure about is, did she know she was going to have this confrontation when she came into the room? Did she have all these arguments pre-planned, pre-organized? And think about what your stakes are and what you're going to lose so that we can feel the heart of this character. You want to make sure that the image you're portraying accurately represents your current look. So if you have various headshots, that's great. If you have one for short hair, long hair, a scruffy beard, clean shaven, whatever your look is that you want to give out to a casting director, make sure that's the look you come into the acting room with. She's moved herself to the far side and she's looking off in that direction. So there's a lot of negative space beside her here. I know that seems like nitpicking, but it kind of feels like she's about to leave all the time. So it doesn't feel like she's really here and present in the room. So I would just frame it up so that she's either center looking off or even slightly to this side of the blank space. So that creates even more of an illusion that there's somebody in frame with her. Because it is. This is a really good example of someone who understands genre. I know we were talking about genre last time. Um, she's obviously speaking from the heart about a matter that's very, very important to her, but she's not being overly dramatic. She's not trying to make you feel sorry for her. She's trying to communicate to her scene partner, her seeing the other character come in. She breathed in that character's new energy. Um, she thought about how that was gonna affect her personally. She made some physical adjustments to herself and then her intentions even changed. So the way she was talking to her scene partner changed because she was no longer working on that person. She was already projecting her thoughts into how she was going to react to the new person. So that was a really good example of how you can make an adjustment in a scene. This is what it would look like before when I used normal street makeup to be on camera. And today I put on extra makeup. Hopefully you'll be able to tell the difference. Uh, if not, I guess I'll be reviewing this tape and maybe editing out this part. All right, let's get started. <laughs> She's putting on makeup. <laughs> oh, wonderful. But if you're going to impress a casting director, it's nice to show a piece with a beginning, a middle, and an end where we see the character transform. Most of us in the Lower Mainland are working for an American audience when we go to our auditions. So it's really important for you to de develop a really strong and convincing American dialect. And then he looked at the person he was talking about. He was referring back to the person he was originally talking to. And then he started addressing the larger room. So he started addressing all the other people in the room. So I'm starting to get a really clear picture of where this character is. The thing I do have a question about is what is his status compared to the person he's talking to? A force like it, like it shines through from behind. So this kind of, of a kind of a menacing hulking energy. Right now it's very calm and it's very laid back, but I don't, I'm still not quite tasting the stakes. I've been watching a lot of Trevor Noah and his self tapes from home, and he's wearing a lot of hoodies, and I figured if it's good enough for Trevor Noah, then it's, it's good enough for me. You might want to start looking up different ways that people connect text in safe ways, because another problem with working um, such dark and deep text with such difficult subject matter is that you can get really in your head about the subject matter you're pursuing. So it's really important to keep yourself safe as an actor from the material you're delivering. It's a really good idea just to do a bit of research when you're submitting to a casting director, especially one you've never met in person before, just to see what their personal preferences are. That was a really lovely piece. I'm getting a little bit emotional about it. Um, 
everybody knows someone in their life who's not coping well. And so um, when you see a character like this, so honestly given, it, it, it provokes a reaction, even in a seasoned casting director like I am. Um, obviously, I get into this business because I care about people and I love telling stories and I'm really interested in sharing my art. So this is, this is a very touching, touching um, audition. Thank you very much for this. This is very beautiful. Um, I'm just going to take a quick break. I would actually ask for a bit more compression. So the more you, when you're communicating with somebody, struggle to hide the emotional re reaction you're having, the more it will break out even despite your ability to, do, to pen it in. But if you want to take the time to actually put a personalized slate at the beginning, it makes me, the casting director, feel that you're actually invested in the project. It also gives me a really nice snapshot as to who you are, what your baseline is, especially if you're doing a big character or comedic character or even a serious or dark moody character. It's nice for me to see what you would be like if I talked to you directly. And I will admit he's creating a lot of nice intensity in his character by taking his time by creating blank and empty space that nobody else dares to fill. So that's kind of nice. It gives him a lot of status in this group. And then when he ramped up, he moved forward a bit and he never receded. He never sat back again, which is nice. These tiny little snapshots are a nice way to show me she's dedicated to her craft and that she's getting herself out there and she's trying to get some work, get some work done. But as a, somebody who's trying to cast her for a specific role, it might be more difficult for me to get an idea of what she's capable of.